In this video, I'll be designing an explosion sound effect in Reaper. When you're designing a complex sound like an explosion, you have to work in layers, and each of those layers has to kind of fit into a specific frequency range. Rather than using a, a pre-made explosion sound that kind of fills the entire frequency spectrum, or layering multiples of that type of sound, or just using a whole bunch of low frequency impacts, uh, you kind of have to fill up the entire frequency range to get something that sounds really balanced. So you want to look at the sub-frequencies, the low mids, the upper mids, the highs, all of these um, individually, as well as how they work together. So you want to go through your sound library and find sounds that fit a particular frequency range. And if they don't quite fit in that frequency range, use a lot of EQ to get them into a particular spot that slides in and fills out the entire frequency spectrum uh, for that impact, that explosion sound, or really any type of uh, designed sound that you're making. You're probably not going to find one sound from your library that that is perfect. It's going to be a combination and it's a bit of work to get them all to fit properly and to sound interesting and um, be really effective. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 29,000 classes on art, design, music, cooking, uh, pretty much everything. It's now one of the first places I look when I want to learn something new. The classes are well organized with great video quality and the Skillshare website makes it really easy to focus on learning. They even have classes on how to teach a class on Skillshare. Pretty cool. Use the link below for two free months of Skillshare Premium. It gives you access to all the classes, no ads, and you can even download your classes to your mobile device for watching offline. After your free trial, you can continue your membership for just $10 a month. Huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring my video, supporting my channel, and so many others here on YouTube. All right, so in this project, I've got a explosion sound effect kind of built here. Um, this was pretty quickly done in about half an hour or so. Probably took a little bit longer because I was just liking the sound. I just wanted to hear it a lot. And I a lot of, did a lot of tweaky little things. Uh, but as far as processing goes on this, I haven't done a whole lot. It's pretty much um, just the sound effects um, as they're added in. A little bit of EQ on things. There's a little bit of uh, reverb. There's some compression and distortion on the master bus. And so here's how it sounds. And so that's not too bad. It's, uh, it's not perfect, obviously. This would be better if we actually had a visual um, for designing this. This is a little unfocused because it's a little hard to tell is, is this a building? Is this a car? Is this a oil tanker exploding? There is both like wood and glass and dust, um, debris. There's sort of fire effects, but there's, it's not really focused. Regardless, this is what we're gonna use for the demo. Here's what's going on in the different layers as I have built them. So here is my rumble layer, which is made up of three different parts. So, um, and I'll turn off the processing for this. So I've got some uh, water dam white noise, and this is uh, stretched to uh, double its length and which drops it down an octave. So that's just sort of, you know, that's rumble, big, kind of thick, um, kind of noisy sound. There's a sub boom that I had in my library. And there's another low boom. And that's sort of like a designed tom sound or something like that, Tycho drum maybe. Now with some effects, which is just re-EQ, I'm going to cut off all the highs because this is our lowest uh, lowest frequency layer. I've got BX sub filter here, which just kind of adds in a low frequency resonance, uh, enhances lows, and it's going to be compressed as actually as a sidechain triggered by the next group of tracks.
All right, so the next layer is what I called punch. And this is going to have several layers. So I've got uh, this metal door impact, and I liked the tail of this. I actually flipped it around, reversed, uh, faded it in. Super common technique. Reversing sounds very, it's just as common as stretching them out to double their length. It's just as common as processing in layers. So here's uh, the metal door impact. Here's a rock tumble. Now that's cut down from um, a longer file uh, where I actually got some debris from originally. Uh, here's a crash box impact. Uh, that's one of my own samples. Here's a eradicated tree, stones, large, you know, I know, I just grab whatever sounded good, really. There must be a contact mic recording on top of a large that was being like ripped apart and stuff. Here's a wind, um, a wind blowout. So that was actually um, my field recorder, a gust of wind, and I think that's a really effective way of kind of showing that like something is really loud. Um, you know, because this is an explosion, you're going to get that gu gust of wind and it might be kind of cool to have, uh, you know, whatever you're listening to kind of blow out a little bit. So here's the EQ for this punch layer. I used transient controller just to, to increase the attack and then a good amount of soft clipping here. And I'm just using stock Reaper effects. And without effects. The next layer is fire, and this is sort of like kind of the power, the lower mid noise layer. I turn off the effects, and so here's fire building, structure, heavy, crackling. What this is really going to be is kind of like that whoosh after the uh, initial impact. And so fire building, light crackles. And this almost goes more into the debris layer, but it it's fire, so it kept it in there with the fire stuff. And that's a gas burner dropped down an octave altogether. With effects, which is re-EQ, setting the high pass and low pass, uh, just to really notch this down into the middle spectrum here. Um, and that's also going to be side-chained. All right, so now we have the roar section. Some of this is kind of uh, noisy elements. This is uh, some, some water flowing from a recent field recording trip. We've got some seal vocals, drop down an octave. And I've got a designed dragon sound effect. I wanted to get a lion, but I didn't actually have any lions in my sound library. Um, it was really common to use animal sounds in explosions and things. Uh, with this water, I've got just this really narrow area. What is that at? 750 hertz. Um, so here's that water again. And so all together, it sounds like this. So I wanted this kind of water effect with the band, uh, you know, really narrow bandwidth to kind of fill in a certain area between 600, 800, 1k area you can adjust the level of that and it kind of fills in where there would be a gap between the punch layer and the fire layer um, or the punch layer and the debris layer i've got another layer here uh, that i've called hiss this is again just water flowing and without effects it sounds like this which I think is an unexpected layer to put into um, an explosion. But when you really filter it, sounds like this. And 
And so it has a little bit of movement to it, which is kind of interesting. Um, but also it's got that high end sizzle. That's, that's pretty cool. And this is something where it really just fills in a gap in the frequency range in that high frequencies that would be missing if you just have all these low frequency elements. Then I've got the debris layer. So there's some uh, rock tumbles, there's some explosive sweeteners, um, where I cut off in a, a pre-made explosion, but I kept the sweeteners. You just got to use whatever you have, really. More crash box stuff, that's stuff that I recorded, and more stuff from the trees. Things like rocks falling, uh, sand, that's a gap that I have in my library, so I'm going to go and record a bunch of stuff like that, because you can see here that I'm duplicating and having to use many different layers for short segments just to fill in the tail of this. Um, I need more things in my library for this. And so here I'm cutting off a little bit of the top end, but cutting off a lot of the lows. And I could probably go even higher with that, but for now, that's how it is. And for reverb, um, I experimented with using a delay here, but I just using Fog Convolver. Um, with a, a plate reverb. Um, yeah, and that was supposed to be 100% wet. Uh, let's listen to this all together without effects. Obviously, the EQ makes a huge difference here. So we'll turn on all the effects. And now we'll look at the master track effects. So I'm using a compressor and decapitator. I mentioned sidechain compression earlier. Um, so what I'm doing here, I've got the rumble track and the fire track sidechain compressed from the punch track. So when the punch track hits, you can see there's movement on these compressors. I'm sending a signal into those, and so that punch pushes everything out of the way, and those, um, those tracks automatically kind of rise up in levels. So that's how I've created an explosion effect using multiple layers and restricting each area into a specific bandwidth. Now you can go a lot further with this, but for now, it worked pretty well. So I hope you've enjoyed that little sound design tutorial there. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.